It's the Chatosphere with Michelle and Laszlo. Hi, I'm Michelle Makes. And I'm Laszlo. And this is Chattersphere, Chattersphere with, with Michelle, Michelle and Laszlo. God, I just love doing that. Me too. So, anyway, on today's show... On we're today's gonna... show... We've got some amazing stuff. We have stuff. a co-host who is accepting the reality of their contract. Come on, Michelle, let me do the intro. Okay, I'm really good at it. I know how to monologue. Seriously, I talk to myself a lot. You know, sometimes I just stand in front of the mirror with no clothes on and say, you like this? You want some of this? Oh, grab my I know. I get it. You're an adult loser. You're pathetic. Every show you do this. No, I'm sorry. You know the rules. Sorry, everybody. See, we're Vinewood liberals. We love each other, but we've got massive egos, so we can't quite get along. My ego was shattered long ago. You know, it was, it was called the 80s, but I picked up the pieces and glued it together with bourbon and acting out sexually with not that very attractive of a woman. Okay, so speak for yourself. I'm speaking for the show, Dicktard. Chattersphere, hosted by me, Michelle Makes, with sidekick support work from you until your contract runs out and you can be let go, Mr. Laszlo. I don't have a surname. Every week, you rub my face in it every goddamn week. Because every week you act like I'm not here and it's still one of your countless previous shows that didn't work out and yet somehow allow you to fail upwards. Man, you must have some amazing pictures of whichever executives you're blackmailing. Listen, if you're gonna fail, fail up, I always say. And you, you're not even being fair. Fair is you calling me a bitch? That was once. Or stealing my jokes? That was twice. Or interrupting me? Or I don't interrupt you. Or you just did it again. I know, it's a joke. The reason men interrupt women all the time is because you yammer on and on. Oh yeah, women, they talk and they talk, and you do the math. Really funny, misogynist. Make me out to be a shrew so you can attack me. That's the easiest trick in the book. This is the 21st century, Laszlo. We're all equal now. Every right-minded person in this city knows that, and still you've got gender issues. The fact is, you hate women. I love women. Michelle, come here. Listen, we, we're, we're off on the wrong foot. Let me rub your back. Oh my god, is that a ball? Ew, get off! Don't rub my back. Besides, you're only a liberal because your job depends on it. Don't be mad at me because you've got moles. You should get that chit. And I'm a liberal because you have to be in the entertainment industry. I'd much rather be chewing tobacco, grabbing my nuts, mistreating women, wearing a wife beater shirt, drinking gin, huffing Freon. I'm the real deal, Michelle. The real deal. My fans know it. <laughs> when I work out, I do it for the fans. When I'm pumping iron, looking at my pecs, I go, the fans want these pecs. I got a TV show, a radio show. I'm everywhere. I'm on a billboard. I'm in bathrooms. Then one idiotic program director on a Ricky Dink talk network says that I don't attract the youth demographic. Well, that's because they're all high. So now I'm saddled with a 22-year-old microblogger with typical millennial issues as a co-host. Host! Whatever. You're the co-host of Chattersphere, the right-minded, left-thinking, progressive entertainment talk show for all of Los Santos and Blaine County. Oh, you just love saying that, don't you? My name's Michelle Makes. God, you're like a parrot that sits on the shoulder of a pirate. You hate women, and you won't stop quoting those dragon brain fantasy novels. I like saying winch. Even if it is from 1402 and there were dragons flying around upside down. Ugh, enough of your renaissance fair speak. You're ridiculous. We have an incredible show today. We've got, who have we got? Let me see, Brother Adrian. He runs the Children of the Mountain, that study program you keep hearing advertised. That is a cult. Why do they always give me the cults to interview? God, I'm doomed. You want to do a show in this market, it's cults and, and whack jobs and fake boobies everywhere. You're so judgmental. I'm not talking about yours. They're tiny fake. I mean, it's cute. I'd like to put little army men on them and they could have a little battle and I'd take pictures and put it on the internet. That's disturbing. It's awesome. It's pretty sexual. No, please, keep describing my rack. It's really doing things for me. Okay, You I host will. a singing contest and work on a celebrity and liberal talk show. The one thing you're not meant to have is opinions. Don't be mad at me because you've got hairy nipples. What are you talking about? I've seen them. You know what? You do the show. You're obviously so much better at radio than I am. What have you been on the air for, six months? I love it when you sulk. I feel like your mother. Anyway, we have a great show. Before Brother Adrian, we're going to speak to a few of your favorite stars, everybody. Actor Jimmy Boston will be on the phone. Tyler Dixon, Milton McElroy. Then we'll take some calls, discuss the issues affecting Los Santos, entertainment, politics, health. It's going to be a great show. Yeah, there's nothing like liberal politics and Vinewood to get people excited. Listen 
listen, everybody. Since I started endorsing a hybrid, I really feel like an expert on green issues. That's great. I saw the commercial. It's just so powerful. Oh, thanks, Michelle. I love you, Laz. Is he on the phone? He is? Great. Here's someone we all really love. You are really wowing us with your new show, Jimmy Boston. How's it going, Jimmy? Yeah, everything's going great. It's a great show. Really great. I told my agent I wanted something serious and character-driven, but that also shows I've got great abs. So yeah, Lifeguard 3D is a fantastic career move. That's just great. <laughs> yeah, movies are overrated. TV, it's where it's at. We'd love to get you on my show. Maybe you could come on and sing with me like a duet. <sighs> Man, it's so great that you're doing something more meaningful. Uh, Jimbo, you know, we could grab a drink sometime, hit the town. I know some amazing underground clubs where celebs like me and you hang out and finger groupies. Thanks, Laszlo. Thanks a lot. Listen, you're a cool guy. I love how you do that whole radio host thing. Really funny stuff. And normally, ugly guys sort of act all shy, but you've got lots of personality and you're really funny, I think. Anyway, glad you love the show. Peace. Kiff long. Oh, not another one. These Absalon guys are taking over. I think he blew you off there, Laz. That's a bromance you're gonna have to let slide. He didn't even want you to be a cameo on Lifeguard. Your career could be out swimming and get into trouble and need rescuing. You've got no friends, Laz. Please, I would be amazing on that show. I would totally wear a banana hammock. I've got friends, Michelle. Lots of friends. And we all hang out in banana hammocks together. Wow, it sounds amazing. I'd love to get involved. <sighs> you have friends? Call one. I would totally rotisserie you. Ew! Oh, I feel soiled. It's fun. You should try it. And you know what? Maybe I will call one of my friends. Look at this address book on my phone. Packed with friends. Look, it's my friend Reed. Maybe I'll call Reed, but you know, later. People don't want to hear from my friends. <sighs> Man, I was out last night partying. Oh, good times. Bottle service. Well, I mean, I snuck the bottle in, but God. And there's nothing like taking advantage of a lonely divorcee from the Midwest while she quietly weeps to let you know that you're a star. I'm on television. The chicks love it. You really are a man. That made me very sad. That entire monologue was, well, it was disgusting. And she's probably crying because it was over in 60 seconds. Who cares? I got mine. I busted a nut. Please don't use that black scent again. And you really hate women. Ball all you want. Sorry Mother Nature made your private parts so tedious. Ugh. Anyway, we've got another celebrity calling in. Someone you can really relate to. An actor and a reality TV star, Tyler Dixon. Hey, Tyler. How's the new show? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I'm just really loving the new show. I mean, it's really different because it's a reality show, but, like, I'm already famous. So it should be really interesting and different. So it's, uh, it's kind of like starting on season two of most shows, which is sort of amazing. That's just great. And any movies? Or are you waiting for the right role? Uh, I really want a big dramatic role. You know, one I can sink my teeth into. Something about character, you know? You know with a volcano or something where I could be like a superhero. What have you done? I'm tired of his blathering. Volcanoes. The whole town is deluded. I love the idea, though. A new kind of reality show about famous people. That's going to be the best of both worlds. Oh, it sounds fantastic. Don't be sarcastic. You're just bitter because they didn't offer it to you. <sighs> Let's go to the phones. Yeah, we want to hear from you out there about what's going on in your Los Santos. Hey, I can't believe what you guys said last week about award shows. I really love them. The interesting speeches, actors rattling off names of people you've never heard of and they blew to get the job. Movies you'll never watch that win the prizes. I love award shows. They make me cry. Award shows are really fantastic. I mean, the Pop Video Awards? So relevant, so controversial. Yeah, fantastic. Nothing like giving each other plastic statues to help elevate art. Next caller. Hey there, I'm Simon. I'm a big fan of the show. Now listen, I just wanted to share with everyone, you don't need to spend all that time working out. I found a perfect solution, okay? I got pec implants, six-pack implants, calf implants. Shoot, I'm perfect. You hear that, Michelle? Why do I need a bisexual Austrian personal trainer to shout and debase me? Hold me to the ground, tell me that I'm worthless, all sweating on me? Who wants to share sweaty equipment or get disgusting fungus? Share showers with stranger? What are you, nuts? I don't want Hong Kong foot or ringworm. I found the perfect fail-safe solution. Surgery! Thank you. That's a guy after your own heart, Laz. Idiotic and superficial. Oh, we have a caller for you. Says his name is Reed. What's up, Laszlo? Hey, buddy. Uh, just to be clear, Laszlo, we're not friends. I defriended you years ago from all of my social networks. 
Wow, you are a mess, Laszlo. Next caller. Hey, Laszlo. That's offensive what you said about fantasy football. You mean when I said it was for creepy perverts who run around the house in a jock strap pecking away at a laptop? Hey, I'm not a pervert. I'm just really into fantasy sports. I have a fantasy football team. I think about it for hours. Fantasizing we just won. We're in the locker room. Half the guys are nude. We're really pumped. We're taking a shower. And then, and then, and then. Look, anyways, so what if me and my friends get together with our laptops and watch the game? It's really exciting. I love statistics. Okay, so, so let me get this straight. You've decided to pump up the, you know, tedium of watching sports and interject the non-stop laugh-a-minute fun of statistics. Listen, there's only one statistic I'm interested in, and that's how many hoes I've had. What, what? Ugh, you keep a running total on the wall? Really classy. That's three digits, woman! Ha-ha! <laughs> one day you'll understand about conquest, Michelle. Speaking of, here's an interesting caller that wants to talk about conquest. Hey, uh... Big fan of the show, but I got a question. What's the, uh, what's the deal with Mars? Well, it is the fourth planet from the sun, and its reddish hue is from iron oxide. This is your space moment of Chattosphere. I mean, why do we have a dune buggy up there? I don't even have a dune buggy. Mars is bullshit. God, man. I'd love to go to Mars or to a space station, you know, get some groupies up there, watch my DNA fly across at zero gravity. It'd be amazing. I could start my own religion and an entire civilization of people bred from me. That would be great. I can see it. Me and a couple of hot Martian chicks. You are revolting, so hypersexualized. Don't you know that we live in a new liberal age where we never say anything mean or crude? It's the new America, the one we've always wanted. Hey, don't get me wrong, America's a great land. You know, it proves you can conquer anything with booze and syphilis, and I've had both. Hey, those colonizers caught syphilis in this country and took it to Europe. Serves them right for wiping out the indigenous culture. Oh, here we go, the hippie lesson of the day. Culture smulcher. And now Los Santos is just coffee shops, banks, and pharmacies. So cultured. So we had to wipe out a few people. I need a bean machine coffee. I'm stressed. I love this town. You know, you could be smug about the rest of the country and live in a vacuum pretending that there's an endless supply of revenue to just hand out to people and for new metro projects. You know, where we're obsessed about the environment, but people are dumping chemicals on their lawns so much that it gives their neighbors birth defects. I mean, this is a state that's got the worst carbon footprint in the world while everybody goes around pretending they like the outdoors. This is a proper liberal's paradise, man. And I worked hard to be king of this paradise, Michelle. I work hard, okay? Your younger generation, millennials, don't understand that. You just listen to your iFruit phone and do yoga. When I kill over dead from working, I want you to say, that Laszlo, he died of a broken heart. Well, cocaine broke your heart. Well, a bit of recreational snort never hurt anyone. Besides, the chicks love it. Anyway, all I do is molly now. It's, it's virtually a health food. Let's go to the phones. Marshall, from Where to Del Sol. Hey, Laszlo, I take real issue with what you said about marching bands. They're brilliant. They're really erotic. <laughs> marching bands? With your matching Napoleonic costumes? Turning rock classics and pop hits into garbage? Oh, look, I'm a toy soldier blowing into a tuba. Do you think a stadium full of drunks cares about your stupid song? We want to see bitches shooting T-shirts. Oh, look at me. I'm an adult in a marching band. Oh, boy. You need help, dude. At least I'm not pretending to be someone half my age. Good point, Marshall. He got you there, Laz. Speaking of lost souls who need a bunch of help, I think we have the perfect guest for you. Laszlo, introduce him. Coming up on Chattersphere with Laszlo and Michelle is... Michelle and Laszlo! That is what I said. It's not. Well, whatever. Let me speak! Being saddled with a woman to appeal to more liberal listeners? I am liberal! Seriously! I've got a TV show, which makes me liberal, so shush, woman! Coming up next, what do we... Uh, oh, not this again. God, I gotta take this producer out and piss on their head. How original. A cult leader in Los Santos. I, I mean, a promoter of alternative thought. Coming up next on Chattersphere with Michelle and Laszlo, alternative therapy life coach, committed spiritualist, and senior lay preacher of the Children of the Mountain Fellowship, Brother Adrian. Brother Adrian, welcome to the show. Hello, my child. My children, both of you. Welcome to the now. So good to have you on the show. Yeah, it makes a real break from the whack jobs and crazies I normally interview. You know, our guest Booker gets us celebrities, but the, the publicist makes us take these has-beens and, and won't-bees. I'm not a psychic, Laszlo, but I am sensing a lot of hostility from you. 
You seem like you are in prison. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't agree more. And do you know who the warden is, Laszlo? Uh, yeah, it's Michelle. No, my child. It's you. Oh, give me a break. Yes, mock. Yes, deride. Yes, call me a whack job. You're a whack job. Call me a cultist. You're a cultist. Call me a pervert. You're a pervert. All right. I'm happy. You're miserable. I, I'm not miserable. Okay, I'm in a career slump. There is a difference. Every time I really start to do well in a market, someone at the station goes whining to HR, and then I get moved to a new place, like a, like a man of the cloth. Hey, speaking of cloth, you're a cult leader, so of course you pretend to be happy, because you say you have all the answers. You're selling people hope. Well, buddy, hope is a lie. I figured out all the answers, <laughs> and believe me, life is a dark, horrible chasm of despair, punctuated by brief moments where you get beer and breasts. So, so trust me, people, <laughs> you do not hope to be like this cult dude. Children of the Mountain is not a cult or a religion. We don't believe in anything. We are a personal development community, using our unique knowledge of human spirituality and development to put you in touch with your true dimension, in stages, for a price. What do you mean, Brother Adrian? What I mean is this. Through literally weeks of dedicated study, I've discovered the secret to realizing human potential, convention, and seminar revenue, and utilizing completeness. I can make you... you. And I can make the you that you are the best you in the whole galaxy of potential yous that are there. Life's a competition. It's a competition with yourself. Well, that's a competition you can win. And I will show you how. <laughs> Dude, I have eight ways of not understanding this. Is this like a 12-step a program? Why do people that quit doing stuff always have to tell everyone else? You know, I quit typing in Granny Wants It Bad into search engines, and I didn't need any program to tell me to stop that. It just took my mom walking in on me on my 31st birthday. Yeah, that's the true definition of shame. A, a mother's boy still struggling against adulthood, you know, pants down, hot laptop on his thighs, things leaking out. I, I brought shame on my family. Shame is meaning. Believe me. When you have all of life figured out, it's your duty to share with others. And I share my message using a range of goal-oriented reprogramming techniques. It's about completeness and the opportunity that offers to people to realize a beautiful truth in a convention center for a weekend retreat. <laughs> Give me a break. I am doing. I'm giving you the best break of all. The chance to live free of dogma and can't. It's a structured study program. What have you got to fear? What is one weekend of your life? Okay, I've been dragged into all kinds of bad situations with that line. I can tell you what one weekend of your life is. One where you wake up with a tattoo and a new wife that pees standing up. Besides, I just have this weird thing against new religions that are founded by tax accountants. Call me boring, but when it comes to imaginary friends, I'm strictly old-fashioned. For the last time, child, we don't believe in anything. There are no secrets. Children of the Mountain is an accredited study program. Follow us and you'll be free from all belief. You'll be free from knowledge. You'll be free to share that with others. Uh, what? This is lunacy. Your hostility is really depressing, Laszlo. You see clearly, Michelle. Laszlo, there's a mountain up there. Let me show you the way. Now listen, dude. I've been to the mountaintop, okay? I've been to a lot of concerts and done a lot of drugs. I've been up there. Okay? I got a top-rated talent show on TV and a nationally syndicated talk show. I've been an anodyne metrosexual that literally millions of people look up to, and believe me, it sucks. Okay? I believe in one thing only. My relentless ability to screw up. One stupid word. One inappropriate comment. One touch. And an innocent caress between colleagues. You know? And it begins again. The slow descent down. Your ratings come down a bit. The groupies, they start to get older and chunkier and have that weird fat girl smell. You appear in commercials for worse and worse cars and suddenly you're not the spokesperson for an expensive Swiss watch, but for some swingers resort in Guatemala or a war zone. You're on the way down, so you get desperate. You do, you do more and more insane things for ratings. You don't care, but it's no good. The public doesn't love you anymore. Nobody loves you. There's a, a great hole of lovelessness inside you. You're just a shell. Nobody cares. Your your friends are more successful than you. They, they won't call you back. They, they don't even re-bleach you anymore. 
You, your life invader friends start to go down. The, the private members clubs tell you that you're no longer welcome because you tried to speak to a movie star there. Well, I was a star once, okay? I was, but it's no good. It, it just, it just, it keeps going down. It's you, okay. It just keeps my going. child. It's not okay. Your producer calls you up. Someone made up some pictures that, that seem to show you, you know, being spanked in a brothel. That's not true. They could put my head on any dude's body. I'm much bigger than that. It's computers. There weren't any cameras in there. You know, it, and then they start calling you a misogynist in the press and on Bleeder. You know, it's not true. Laszlo loves women. I love women. They call me gay, and that's not true. Laszlo's a man. He has a man's needs. Uh, only it, it, st it still keeps coming. The, the great wall of shame and the self-loathing just flows on and on like you're on the ground. And there's just a group of men urinating on you. But it, it's a hypothetical urination. Then one day your producer comes in and says, Laszlo, even though you've been a syndicated radio host for a long time, and even though you're great, now you're going you're gonna to be the co-host. The assistant to the host. Shut up, okay? You won. You're perky. You're young. You look great. And I'm the assistant to the host of a woman with literally nothing to say. I get it. You did a mountain of blow in the 90s. It was no one cares. It was fantastic, okay? I'm glad you had blow all over your nose for many years. You don't have a catchphrase. I don't need one. And nobody gives a shit. I was big in the 90s. I was. I remember dot com and we used to program computers like C colon forward slash and HTTP forward 10 print hello 20 go to 10. The great terror of time is something we cover in our study program, my child. <laughs> Just leave me alone, all of you. There, there. Sometimes from the valley, we can see the mountain through the clouds. That's what makes us its children. <laughs> I don't understand valleys or clouds. It sounds like a nursery rhyme. Oh, you take a minute, Laszlo. Man, listen, anyone saying the male menopause is a myth? Just remember this moment, please. It's very simple. You just work through a very cost-effective program and achieve limitless joy. That sounds wonderful. Laszlo, stop crying. I've... I'm not crying. Well, thank you, Brother Adrian. Your seminars seem very interesting. Yes, very But I think we've run out of time on Chattersphere. I love you, Michelle. Oh. This has been the Chattersphere with Michelle and Laszlo. I'm rich, successful, and throwing it all away on multiple women. I'm drowning in pussy. <gasps> it's terrible. Sounds like a serious case of sex addiction. Buy my book, 13 Steps to Heaven, today. 13 Steps to Heaven. Available in the discount bin at bookstores everywhere. Real talk, real issues, real experts. Patronizing. Real patronizing. WCTR. CTR. I am Fernando Martinez. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. Joe, you make the clapping sound effects a little bit too loud. That's my producer, Joe, everybody. She is a woman, not a lady, not a fox, not a chick, not a piece of ass, but a woman. Now listen, for those of you who say Fernando, he's like a dinosaur, he does not understand the modern world. He is an old relic of the bygone age. I like to point out Joe is a woman. More or less, therefore, Fernando, he has gone multicultural. He is very much of this century. I am famous for many things I have been in this life. Entrepreneur, singer, therapist, artist, disc jockey, philosopher, lover, corporate spokesman, martyr for justice and truth that lives in every man and woman's heart when I was unfairly imprisoned for entirely unproven allegations. In short, I understand life and life, she understands me. I have been chosen to help guide you down these crazy rabbits. After my show was taking off the air, now I am making money by talking about money and making love by talking about politics and also because I am the new man. No longer do I talk about grabbing the girl by the haunches, riding her like a pampas bull and sating your every manly desire. No, no, no. Those days, they are gone. The medallion, she is off. The children, they have a mommy and daddy to look up to. And I am not making inappropriate remarks by letting my passionate gaze linger on Joe's remarkable form. Not for a second. Oh, shut up. You see, I take the classes, the awareness classes, the 21st century classes. Now I know I live a long time in ignorance. 
I feel so sorry for treating the women like pieces of meat. Now I treat the women like they are equal to me. Goddesses, it is not appropriate to tell a sexy lady that her curves make your loins turn to fire. Now you say something sensitive, like, have you considered an exciting career in microfinance? You are very smart. You see, these days, there is so much left that is unsaid, like lust. It's so good to be back, right, Joe? Yes, yeah, it's great. We have a great show. Let's get into it, Fernando. Listen, money talk time. The markets have been going up and down. Fernando has been watching the bond market especially. Very volatile, like a lit flare. Boom! And then gone. For your financial questions, let's go to the phones. Speak. Make sweet love to me. Talk dirty like you think Fernando has been a real naughty boy who needs a good spanking. Uh, yeah, wow. All right, well, anyway, Fernando, I love your show. You've really given me some fantastic stock and tax avoidance tips over the years. I wanted to know, how do you feel about the debt ceiling? Listen, my child, I love ceilings. I love staring at ceilings. I love mirrored ceilings. I watch the lion hunt his prey, only backwards. A man grows old, but a lion grows distinguished. I am a lion. They put me in the cage, but I break free. You must break free of the debt. The debt ceiling. The debt ceiling is a ceiling I do not love. She is very delicate, like a barrier of skin that denotes youth passing into full womanhood. You must smash through it with turgid loins, no? No, no, absolutely not. This is not how we think now. This is the old Fernando. How we think now is the debt ceiling is an arbitrary barrier to a productive, integrated economy. If we can now borrow, what have we become? We have become fools. These politicians, they should not play with the debt ceiling. You are going to end up in a lot of trouble and get slapped. Okay, okay, let's go to our next caller. She's really upset. Hi! I can't believe what I am hearing. Who are you? What happened to the show Lean In? Yeah, they kind of got canceled. I don't want to hear about the stock market and politics. I'm a housewife. I want to hear four women prattle on, claiming to empower us by talking about celebrity rumors, facts, and shoes, while passively, aggressively criticizing each other. Listen, I feel for you. I am very sorry, lady. I mean, woman. But I want you to listen to that chromosome. Why would I listen to... Precisely. Listen to this white chromosome hanging up on you. You have two exes like a bottle of moonshine, and you make people go blind and crazy and feel terrible the next day. Okay, okay, Fernando, come on, that's, that's enough. Oh, no, sorry, Joe. I'm sorry. I try. I try. I make progress. I relapse. Let's get to our first guest. Please welcome to the Fernando Show gubernatorial candidate, former teacher, and successful divorcee, Sue Murray. Sue, come on in. Sit down. Good to meet you. Let's rub noses like Eskimo people. Uh, good to meet you. I'm so excited to finally be on your show. That's a fantastic pantsuit you're wearing. A suit that looks like pants. You are a professional lady that does not show off the cleavage. Thank you. R really, I, I think. <laughs> Let's get to it. The state, she is broke. The poverty, she is terrible. The people, they cannot afford a new cell phone every month. What do you think, Sue? I think getting a woman in office is crucial. If I go through that door, I take everyone with me. I take all of the women of San Andreas with me. They'll all be governors if I am. That's how I want everyone to think of it. A door we're breaking through because you're voting for yourself in the shape of me. This is a very big office. How will you feed all these women? And they will talk loudly? And some of the women, they are angry, and some they are bitter, and some they are catty, and so everybody is menstruating at the same time. This is a problem. Well, it's more of a metaphor. Listen, I've done a lot of thinking, and I've realized the only way for women to move forward is if we all start to think in exactly the same way. Like ants. 
the hive mind. Exactly. By all being the same. That's how we will be free. Listen, women finally need to make it through the door of the state capitol. You are probably just going to spend a lot of money redecorating and looking through catalogs. Uh, uh, Fernando, we spoke about this. Uh, we know women have a legacy as problem solvers and can emotionally detach themselves from things. Well, I want to bring that attitude to running this state for everybody. Well, everybody I like and can talk down to like a real liberal. Fernando has a question about education policy. A beautiful and fertile 28-year-old female teacher, she make love to a 16-year-old student. She get a slap on the hand. But a male teacher, he wants to educate a cheerleader in the ways of love. He is a criminal serving a 15-year sentence and on a database for life. Many times, when Fernando was in class, he would look at the teacher and think, hmm, I would like to bend her over while she write algebra equation on the chalkboard. So sexy. Uh, 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 Fernando, equality, remember equality, no sexism. Oh, no, I have done it again. Uh, what? I am working through some things, terrible things. Well, we as a state need to work together. And to your question, firstly, it's not okay for anyone to take advantage of anyone else. Let's be clear about that. I was a teacher for many years, and no one ever took advantage of me. Being a teacher explains why I speak so loudly and talk down to everyone. Do you two understand? When you talk to fourth graders every day, you have to come down to their level. And that's sort of like dealing with normal people. Children are the future. This is not possible. No, children are the future. And that means the future is going to poop the bed. That's why I think I'm perfect to run the government. In government, you have to learn the rules of the game, then change those rules. It's about taking a good hard look at what we are glorifying in our culture, and then shutting down anything too many people find fun or funny. I mean, if people are happy, Who's going to do the work? I encourage everyone to do their part to help me win this election, but also fight back against the big oil cartels. I know. They have a stranglehold on this country, holding it hostage from behind, penetrating tears, but also joy from the tears, because oil and petroleum are a very sensible investment. People say, Fernando, you are a liberal guy. You go to the charity dinners and have a recycle bin full of champagne bottles. Fernando, how can you invest in the oil? Fernando is how you say, a pragmatic guy. Fernando worry about old Fernando. Fernando, he knows the true liberal have the money and the guilt. And that is who I am, who I want to be, the rich hypocrite with the guilt complex like you, Sue. Listen, Fernando, I'm from a middle-class family that worked hard so that I could eventually marry an obscenely rich man and then tell women out there to stand up, stop complaining, and make something of themselves. I believe in hard work. You had a very public divorce, Miss Murray. Yes, that was unfortunate. But I stood up for what I deserved in divorce court. Our legal system recognizes the contribution a spouse makes to the other's success. <laughs> Excuse me? Fernando not laughing. He, um, thinking you deserve more. Yes, we do deserve more. I took 80% of my ex-husband's wealth. Like many women, I said one thing before we got married, then stopped doing any of those things afterwards, and acted indignantly when my husband got upset. And that ability to lie and change my mind makes me perfect for elected office. Now I'm ready to sign a contract with our great state and be your next governor because I've proven I'm someone you can trust to break their word when it's for the best, and that's what we need in a leader. We should talk about border security. Yes. Fernando was thinking about the gaping hole in our nation's security. We have to plug that hole. We are all exposed. Shut it tight. Ah, uh, Fernando. Sorry.
but it's a fact. We gotta plug the gap. But at the same time, we should allow some undocumented workers in for a party time. I know, Fernando became an American the courageous way, by outrunning the speedboat. Well, we need to make sure we can pledge to our children, and our children's children, that they will have clean air to breathe, clean bottled water to drink, and most of all, that the rich will pay their fair share, which I compute to be about 82.5% of all future income. So what you're saying, Sue, is you've made a lot of money, and going forward, nobody else will be able to. Exactly. I'm very wealthy, and I'm making sacrifices. So the middle class will have to get on board, too. It stands to reason. Does it? Yes. If we want a fairer world, it stands to reason that you need a rich, impartial person to tell you how to make it fair. This is something Vinewood understands implicitly, and I'm going to take it across the state. Let's get back on track. I think we have a health crisis in this country, and people should have the medicine they need, like Proposition 208. Yes, Fernando loves medical cocaine. I say, pretty lady, you look like you are not feeling well. I will help you. I have put a row of medicine down there for you. Oh, yes. She's feeling much better now. Maybe you want to take it like a suppository. Poof. Yes, yes, okay. We have some people on the phone who have questions for Miss Murray. Okay, line eight. Hello, you are on the Fernando Show with Sue Murray. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm a big sports fan, but it's gotten a little ridiculous, you know? The celebrities get the best seats, and they come for free, and the stars don't try. They get paid millions of dollars and constantly go on strike. The food costs a lot of money. Well, that's the true meaning of sport. It's about a shared experience of going broke together while watching a few drug addicts get insanely rich. That's America in a nutshell. I want to tax those rich people and make them think twice about what they did to get there in the first place. Well, we better get a damn football team, cuz it's bad enough this city has no real identity except unhinged police and terrible TV. Yes. Violence is a real problem. Fernando knows this very well. I give the guy in traffic the bird. He does not like the bird so much, I think, because he comes and kicks Fernando's door. There are so many things that glorify violence. I saw this awful book at the store, Hitting Kids Works Wonders, by some ex-soldier called Alan McLean. I mean, you should never, ever, ever lay a hand on a child. This is true. Don't touch that child. You will get in big trouble if someone is watching. Now, you talked earlier about the debt ceiling. That's a big issue that is too often politicized. A lot of professional women in this state are hitting a glass ceiling. The debt ceiling, the glass ceiling. Fernando is tired of all these ceilings. Ceilings aren't really ceilings. They're those fake ceilings in little squares, and you can hide things up there. Um, okay. Well, we've got someone on the phone who really wants to talk to Miss Murray. It's author and parenting guru, Alan McLean. Hey, I heard what you said about my book. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. McLean, but it's barbaric. Children should be coddled and never made to feel bad or actually respect authority. I'll come over and hit your kid right now. Hell, I'll come over and hit you. You sound like you need a spanking by a Marine, and I'm the Marine to do it. My goodness. I thought this was an intelligence station. Is this what you would like, Sue Murray? Would you like this man who writes the book to spank you like a little girl and then holds you tight afterwards, his stubble on the nape of your neck, smelling of whiskey on his breath? What, 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 what are you talking about? Never. S since I divorced my ex-husband and took all his money, I've pledged myself to a higher calling, public office and political correctness. Keep telling yourself that, sister. Let's take another caller. Hi, Miss Murray. I'm gonna vote for you. I really appreciate how you reach out to the gay community. Oh, you have the best parades. I'm not gay. I mean, I wish I was. Anyway, listen, over 80% of marriages end in divorce. It's a historical fact. All women eventually turn into fat slobs. Fernando is agreeing with you silently, but out loud he says, don't hurt people's feelings. I mean, gay guys keep in shape at least. Well, most of them do, but wives? 
I don't think so. Excuse me, what kind of shape are you in? That's not important. I'm down to 400 pounds now, you know. I can almost see my penis. A powerful bear who loves his honey. Okay, okay, let's go over here to line five. Please, speak some sense. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, Mrs. Murray. Big fan. I'm voting for you. I really am. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I really want a multi-millionaire battle axe telling me how to live. It's no wonder politics sucks. The choice is between you, who give women a bad name, and a guy whose qualification for office is that he's great at jumping off of a train wreck. We all know women hating women is the worst form of misogyny. I don't hate you because you're a woman. I hate you because you're a rich idiot who thinks you're better than everyone else. But if you see what I have to put up with, Joe, you see? Women hate each other, try to bring each other down. That's men getting into their brains. I love you, Sue. I love you when you get flustered, when you get sweaty. You, you, you're a woman hater. I've had about as much as I can take. G goodbye. I took the classes. I am a new man. I love all women equally. Oh, yes, right, of course. Sue, come back here. Oh. Sit on my lap. She's gone. Why does this keep happening? Okay, I think that's pretty much all we have time for today. I was just getting my emotional flow going. But okay, remember, the passion, she is back on The Fernando Show. This is Weasel News. Empty head and a great rack? Panic Girl cheerleader tryouts begin today. And why a local nudist will no longer be serving empanadas. Sports news. They are the best part of sporting events. Hot girls bouncing up and down, reminding us of our failures in life while we look on and numb ourselves with another overpriced beer. Cheerleader tryouts for the Los Santos Panic began today. And Teresa Smith says she can't wait to be a panic girl. Oh my God, I've always wanted to shoot t-shirts at men. I have real aggression issues after my dad abandoned me and my mom. She said it's always been her goal to cheer on moody basketball millionaires in tight clothes. Food trucks are all the rage for people that enjoy cuisine made in a tiny bus. But one favorite hipster nudist food truck was shut down by health inspectors today. A local resident says he's glad. Who cooks in the nude? I certainly don't after getting third-degree burns on my penis. This was Weasel News. WCTR cares about you, your community, and your time spent listening. There's a war going on for your mind, and you've lost it. You've lost this it. is Chakra Attack, a new approach to Los Santos County integrated health needs, and I'm your host, Dr. Ray D'Angelo Harris. Um, let's all say that again. Um, be cleansed one, be cleansed all. It's time to wake up. It's time to sleep. It's time to wash that dirt out of your systems. It's time to be one. It's time to be one on one. It's time, my brothers. It is time right now. Time for my show. Welcome to this week's Chakra Attack with Dr. Ray D'Angelo Harris. And I am, as you have already probably ascertained by now, your host, Dr. Ray D'Angelo Harris. Have we armed yet, Cheryl? Have we armed? Yes. You heard me go? Um, yes. Well, I'll take your word for it. Several times. This is life. This is what we are giving you. So I'm giving you right now. I'm taking a break right now to give you this right here. Um. Uh -huh. Oh, you are one fine girl. I need your strength, baby. I need you here with me. Stay with me, girl. Be conscious of where you are. That's my producer, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Nurse Cheryl Fox. Mm -hmm. Cheryl. Mm -hmm. With me, girl. I need you. Mm -hmm. um. Hi, girl. I need you. I need you to go deep now. I need you to go deeper. Uh -huh. um. Together, together, together now. Come on now. Mm. You out there too. Mm. If I don't feel you, you can't feel me. Come on, Cheryl. One more time. Mm. That is beautiful. Yes, we have all. Mm. Whatever you are doing, give yourself a big fat. Mm. Imagine one great wave of love, one great wave of joy, a great wave of spiritual clarity. Imagine it all um, up your thighs like a big sticky mess of love. Imagine your soul is like a bazooka. Boom! Or a balloon that a little innocent child sets free to the heavens. And the camera pans up as that balloon floats free and a swell of music plays as it soars to the heavens. Then it comes down in the ocean and a turtle eats it and it has internal hemorrhage and dies. You have killed that turtle. 
That's the wrong message you're sending. Don't set things free that are going to kill other things. You are attacking the world in the wrong way. Yes, you are. That's not the way to live. That is not the message to send. Like a python that's too big for your house. And you set it loose in a schoolyard with children. That python's going to wrap itself around kids. And now you have caused a mess. That is not how we do it here, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. That is not the, the, the circle of life. That's the circle of life that leads to death. You hear me, Cheryl? I hear you. I know you hear me. Come on. Oh. 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 Keep reaching for the heavens, and when you get there, be careful as there's no oxygen in the heavens, in the upper reaches of the stratosphere, and you will die. I promise you, you will die. Oh. You cannot go to heaven as a human. You can only go to heaven as a damn angel. You hear me? You hear me? Um. And that's why heaven is full of angels and not living, breathing people. Because people need oxygen and there ain't no oxygen up there. It's a bit like one of those self-pleasuring token games where you make a love with somebody, you put your hands around their neck, they have life, but then you choke the life out of them while you pleasuring them. Oh, Dr. Ray, I like those. Uh, hey, most women love that. I love it. You get on top of a woman, you crush her sternum, you crush her rib cage, yes. you put your hands around her neck, and you're giving it to her and taking it away. You're giving life, and you're taking life away at the same time. It's two things going on here. It's a hot and a cold. You know, you're choking, but you're giving life and feeling. Squeezing the love into them, but squeezing the life out. It's an in and an out motion going on here. You have just played the choking game. That's health. That's integration. That's what we are here to do every morning before we get started we always home that's a chakra attack hey Cheryl yes Dr. A what I just say oh um, what I just say one more time oh um, what I just say oh um, what Dr. I just say um. you out there what I just said what did I just say I said home um, bang 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 no that ain't the sound of me banging you. Okay. That's the sound of me attacking your chakra. We bring a Western street knowledge and Eastern spirituality together in a unified approach to contemporary integration. Such that the mind and body are one. Such that the ignorance and knowledge be one. Such that the sense and the nonsense be one. When you put sense and nonsense together, what the hell do you got? You got some bullshit going on in your mind. That's everything mushed together like a goddamn jambalaya. Peanut butter and ice cream, guns and butter, ants in your damn pants. It all makes sense because you eat peanut butter and ice cream, you're going to get diarrhea. And you're going to have ants in your pants. Are they eating the butter? They're eating the shit. What do you think they're eating? Ants eat so shit because you don't eat that peanut butter and that damn ice cream. But do the ants go, do they crawl in your butthole? No, they just eat the shit that's coming out your ass. When things don't agree with you, that's what I'm talking about. Now that's sense and that's nonsense together and they do not agree with each other. And now they have merged and gave your ass diarrhea. We're cleansing everything, mind, body, and your spirits. We're going big. We're going all the way. Nirvana, Pruda, Valhalla, Limbo. And this being Vinewood, Bimbo, Himbo, and Dumbo. Around the world and back again. You got a round trip, girl, to spirituality. Okay. A round trip. Cool. Okay? Yeah. This is the full set. It's something all-encompassing. Like a big compass which has everything in it. Not just a silly arrow that tells you which way to go north, but also a lot of other arrows that tell you other shit. Like which way to the liquor store, or if some fool is getting fresh, or if you are at one with all mankind. A karma compass that tells you street shit and real shit, but also lots of other arrows, a whole bunch of arrows in that damn compass. You know no, that's just, isn't that a GPS? No, 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 no. You're thinking about navig navigation, that kind of shit in your car. Yeah, the liquor store. You, no, but see, yeah, that's what you're wrong. You're in the car. You're navigating on foot. 
You understand? Ah. Now, I don't know what app you got, but your mind is an app. Cheryl, you are a damn app. Wow. You flowing. You are floating, girl. Oh. Now, say oh, and you float and rise yourself off the ground right now in front of all these people on the radio. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, I want to see you better rise uh, off the uh, ground. Defy gravity right now. Okay. Um... Sure, just still rolls off the ground. Her she just rolls off the ground. I'm still on the ground. She is floating on her You're spirituality not right being now. Being honest. You understand? She is floating right now. This is a karma compass, everybody. Okay. That tells you street shit and real shit. It's like one of them senses that tell you if there are aliens crawling in the ceiling and they are getting closer and you freaking the hell out because you are like, this alien gonna drop through this ceiling, towel, and whoop some ass. Right, Cheryl? That damn alien gonna come through that ceiling and whoop some human ass. While the men is fighting the aliens, the women are in the corner crying. That's not really fair, but... It's not fair. But that's what happens in the movies. That's exactly what happened. You're high. But when you try to run, you trip. Okay. Right? Not black women, but white women do trip. I'm sorry. I had to go there with you, but I got to go there. I had to pull a race car out. Comes that's in. what happens. You sit in that goddamn corner, and you start to scream and cry. And while the aliens are killing your man, you are sitting there crying. Then they take you up to space, and they impregnate you. You understand what's going to happen to you? Uh... They're going to take you up there, and they're going to do it to you. They're going to do it to you good. They're going to do it to you with their, with, with their, with their, with, with, with their alien prong. You understand? That's how they do it. And that's why you got to get the spirituality in your body right now. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today, it's all about empowering the ladies. Spiritual things come in threes. A three-part. Only not sleaze and no crossing swords and no worrying about if it's right or wrong or if you enjoyed it too damn much because you're supposed to enjoy every last bit of it, Cheryl. Yes. Do you enjoy every last bit of it? I enjoy most of it, yeah. Hmm. I don't know about the aliens taking me to bed. You don't know if you're going to enjoy that because it hasn't happened yet. You have no idea what that alien got in his alien pants. You understand? No one knows what kind of slong an alien has. You don't know that, Cheryl, so don't speak on it before you know okay. what the hell you're doing. Because you're supposed to enjoy it all. Every last bit of it. All life should be enjoyed. Right, Cheryl? Mm -hmm. You're enjoying life, right? Yeah, I love I love my life. You go to those music festivals and take Molly and listen to some old ass has been play a 25 minute version of a song. 25 damn minutes of the same damn bullshit you done heard before. Patchouli and nitrous, am I right? I love camping and being in nature, like next to my car, 50,000 other people getting spiritual, mm -hmm. sucking on balloons, Dr. A. And then when you wake up, you're in some people's tent and you have no idea what happened. That's right. I love it. Spiritualness is all about wherever you get your core energy. Yeah, yeah. Getting a train in a campsite with absolute strangers while high on hallucinogens? Don't matter if you're black, white, yellow, old, young, or a bit of every damn thing. Blind, crippled, and crazy. That is a path to true enlightenment. You will know a lot about yourself after you get on that damn train with a blind, crippled, and crazy person. That damn train start rolling, somebody's going to yell out, All aboard! Yeah. You're getting spiritual. Yes. Now, talking of journeys, every last bit of this crazy journey we are on is called getting respected by any means necessary. I take pride in what the hell you looking at. Because that lets me know what the hell I got. See, Cheryl? Enjoy the view. Enjoy the view. It's a horizon over there. There's mountains, and there's peaks, and there's valleys on that body. You understand? Share the women, but just don't leave no stains, because that ain't nice. You don't leave a stain on a man's leg. Oh, is that nice, Cheryl? No. Is that nice, Cheryl, for you to get on top of another man's woman and leave stains and don't go to that restroom and get to a towel and wipe her off? It's not. That's very uh, it's unsanitary and it's not nice. It's very unsanitary. You have stained me. Because every time I make love to my woman, all I'm thinking about is what, Cheryl? The stain that... That's 
what I'm thinking about in my mind. I can't get aroused if I'm thinking about the stain that that man left on my lady. Mm. Let me take a breath. Let me breathe now. I am Dr. Ray D'Angelo Harris, and I'm your spiritual guide, Los Santos. I'm a registered health practitioner with an international recognized degree. I'm a trained yogi who can suck both his big toes at once. I'm an expert in cleansing, a devotee of colonics, and a wise man. You know what colonics are? Yeah. What do colonics go through? It's, it, goes, it goes to your butthole. No, your ass. Your it ass. goes to your ass, Cheryl. I'm a compassionate lover and a fierce warrior all at the same time. Sometimes I'm a warrior and compassionate at the same time. They don't know where I'm coming from sometimes. A lady's laying there on top of that bed confused because she don't know where I'm coming from. I'm like a pitcher throwing a curveball or a slider. You understand? You don't know what's coming because you ain't the catcher. You see? See what, see what I just did? See how I did that? I went into your head and took you to a baseball game. Mm -hmm. You understand? I am a compassionate lover and a fierce warrior. I spoon, I fork and knife, and that's what the chakra attack is all about. Love making sometimes mean you need to wrestle or howl like an animal. Oh! Oh! Anyway, let's go to the phones. Speak, my child. I love you with all that I have. Take what you want of me and leave me spent. Hello? Hello? Speak up, homie. Hello? Um, hello? Oh, for land's sake. Sure, give me a better call, Sweeney. God was a fool. He had me on mute. Who the hell puts Dr. Ray D'Angelo Harris on mute? You kidding me? You disrespecting me? Seriously, woman? Ray, chill the hell out. You're on the radio. I'll light some incense. Calm. I am calm. But I'm also angry. That is a duality. That's what Dr. Ray D'Angelo Harris is all about. Duality. Duality. Do you understand, woman? I can't be understood by you, right? I'm talking a foreign language to you. I'm amazing, you understand? Just give me another call and stop playing the woman card with your unshaven legs and pierced nose and disdain look for everyone else. Uh. Yeah, you do. You have a disdain look for everybody in my universe. Seriously, I can read your mind and you're wrong. You're dead wrong, okay? Who we got? Call on, speak. Hi, Ray. Big fan of the show. Um. I'm um, back at you, brother. Big um. Big um with cheese on top. Um. Organic cheese as well, like from a cow. This is so exciting. I, I knew I was gonna get on this week. I really did. Uh, Doctor Ray, I think I'm psychic. Can I be a guest on your show? I, I know the answer. I know the answer is no because because. Uh... Because you're batshit crazy, nutcase. Locked up in some loony bin, and you call me every week. You call every damn week, run your phone bill up, talking that bullshit. It's it's not it's not a it's not a loony bin, Doctor Ray. It's a high security mental institution. I, I never got convicted of a crime. I'm very thorough about DNA cleanup. I'm a spiritual being, Doctor Ray. I'm just like you. Um. Dr. Ray, you're not oming with me. I feel your pain, my brother. We are all one, but some of us are also two. And that's that. Bye now. Sure, so keep that freak off my goddamn show. Talking to freaks. Did I ever tell you about some nasty twins named Tammy and Sammy who have restraining orders against me after some hot yoga got out of hand? Hot yoga started and it went out of control. Weren't my fault. Damn women, it's 120 degrees. I was getting spiritual. Cheryl knows I act out when I think I'm gonna die. Oh, I'm a terrible fright on a damn airplane. You gotta see me fly. Oh, I'm terrible. It's true, they have to scramble the jets. Listen, we get into turbulence, I'll grab a titty. That's the first thing I'm thinking about because that's where my mind goes sometimes. If we're gonna die, I'm gonna go down in a fetal position. Fetuses want titties. I ain't sucking no damn thumb. I'm going out the same way I came in. Everything in the universe is about two. And that again is the duality. When one becomes two, problems can arise. I am very clear about this in my book. Cheryl, what's the name of the goddamn book? When One Becomes Two, Problems Can Arise, A Study in Duality by Dr. Ray D'Angelo Harris. There you go. 
There you go. Many are called, but few are chosen correctly out of a police lineup. I choose you, caller. Speak to me. Um, with me. Hey, man, I'm calling you from jail. Dad? Is that you? Hello? Daddy? Uh, no. You know you don't know who your dad is. I know that one day he's gonna hear me on the radio and realize the spiritual mistake he made and come back and we're gonna enjoy all the things a father and son should do. Fishing, bike riding, three ways. Going to a farmer's market. Beekeeping, organic honey, knitting, a dad and his boy. You know, knit one, pearl two, all that shit. Gangster style! Blah, 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 blah! And I can say, Dad, I made you a sweater. And it won't fit very well, but he will wear it proudly. And if any man challenges him, he will say, I ain't no sissy. I ain't no damn sissy. My son made this for me, and he is Dr. Ray D'Angelo Harris. Holds a shocker attack on WCTR. Who are you screwing with? Hey, man, are you going to get to my question? Oh, I'm sorry, my brother. I went deep. I went too deep. I went, I went, I went six feet under that time. I shoved the phone up my ass and smuggled it from Jim Pop just so I can call your show. Oh, you poor man. Sure, loves a conjugal visit. Listen, I'm in here for a real bullshit charge. What is it? Triple homicide, total accident, but they deserved it. Anyway, I'm in a spiritual hole. We can help you get out that hole, brother. You in a deep hole. I gotta put my hand down there and pull you up. Sure, get my soul shovel. I'm about to dig this fool out of this chakra hole. Have you fallen down a well, brother? I will pull you out and we can drink of that water together even though you have most likely polluted the groundwater. Like you've been fracking yourself right. I'm really into Zen and Omen and yoga and I want to get married to a woman who will be there for me when I get out in 2025. We can have a baby while I'm in prison. One inmate told me you can smuggle your own baby batter out if you hold it under your tongue and exchange it with a family member in the meeting room. Anyway, I know I've made mistakes. I want someone I can grow old with and brutally murder in our golden years. I think you need some body whispering. Dr. Ray D'Angelo Harris is a spiritual body whisperer. Um, um, many of you might ask, what are you doing? I'm um, why are you making that noise? It relaxes myself and the ladies. You see, um, it's a scientific frequency that lulls the ladies into a relaxed spiritual place where the brain shuts off and the thighs go into overdrive. Mind off, body on. It's like trying to start a car. Z -z 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 -z. Z -z 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 Z -z 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 -z. That mine is the battery. That battery is drained and dead. But the engine's good. Right? You understand, Cheryl? Yeah, I can yeah. teach you how to get that frequency. But you have to buy my book and my mm, call. You know how duck hunters have a call they blow on that attracts ducks so they can shoot them like stupid ass sitting ducks? That's where that term comes from. A sitting duck. Because that duck's sitting there. Right? He heard that call and he sat there and got his ass shot. Boom! Feathers everywhere. Well, I have developed a bird call that attracts women. It's called the Dr. Ray D'Angelo Harris mm, Spiritual Fine Lady Soothing Call to Attract Women. It's shaped like a sausage, and trust me, it looks a bit strange. But blow it and you'll see. Walk out on your cul de sac or at the PTA meeting and blow on that thing, and women go mental. Believe me. And sure, you have to blow on a sausage. But while you're blowing on the sausage, you want to... <laughs> Hell, I had a whole yoga studio full of fine women all over me when I blew that sausage-shaped horn. It was like one of those medieval shows on cable, only we didn't have a dwarf or a yak skin for a blanket. Some ignorant fools will say, are you really humming on that sausage? No, I'm cleansing myself like, like, like wheatgrass on your radio. That's how you cleanse yourself. But wheatgrass tastes awful. It tastes awful. Of course it does. But a sausage-shaped horn does not. You understand? The wheatgrass through your radio is a metaphor. It's a figure of speech. You understand? You are a terrible liberal woman. Bad, bad liberal. I bet you don't even give the public radio. No way. Why bother? It's so patronizing. It's like being spoken down to by a beggar. You have to give yourself and your money to public radio. You understand? Do I have to break this down to you, woman? Shut your mouth! That's public radio you talking about! I am for profit, but many are not. 
You are barely talking on this show. How am I supposed to teach you the ways of broadcasting, the ways it means, what I means? Your karma is getting shot off the hell. Oh, relax, Ray. I cannot relax, girl. I am not into relaxation. Relaxation is weak. I want to be hit. I am strong. Hit me, Cheryl. Hit me with the rain stick, Cheryl. Oh, not this again. I really don't understand how hitting you with a rain stick is helpful. Turn that upside down. Hear those soothing sounds? That is from Australia. And you're blowing to it. Isn't that called a didgeridoo? Whatever! Hit me with a stick! I'm a piñata! I'm not a piñata! You hear me? Why are you obsessed with piñatas? Because that's life, Cheryl. You either is one or you isn't one. And sometimes you both is, and you isn't. Ain't you learn nothing? If you would focus on your damn chakra for half a second, all would become clear to you. You can hang yourself in the public square and let people hit you with sticks till candy and coins drop out your ass. Or you can sit on the mountaintop and um, It's simple. I like both. So we got all these lines lit up. Let's go to line four. This guy is really spiritually constipated. He's got an ass full of candy. Let's hit him with one of the big sticks of love. My friend, what's up? Free yourself. Breathe deep. Yeah, that's bullshit what you said about coconut water. Don't you go disrespecting coconut water. That's the nectar of the gods. From places that are mad spiritual. With cave paintings and bacon sun and drum circles and heat stroke and where you can swim with dolphins. Dolphins! <laughs> and communicate with them. Swim with them and communicate with the dolphins. Dolphins are delivering babies, you punk ass. I heard the dolphins molest people. Where you hear that, woman? TV? That damn anti-spiritual booty box will suck the life out of you in a minute. Make your whole inner glaze over like someone threw your soul into an oven all covered in egg white. Like this coconut water fool right here. <laughs> Listen, my friend. I just drink some, and I'm a significantly more hydrated than you. I'm hydrated. I'm a whole lot wetter than you. People in tropical locations are never thirsty. They've discovered the miracle of coconut water. Crack, crack, and you fill your glass up. Now, each coconut maybe contains six ounces of coconut juice. Now, if you got a 16-ounce glass, you're going to want to break two coconuts and hydrate yourself. Or you chop it up and sprinkle it on a coconut cake. You understand? It's called coconut flakes. Listen, the next big thing is going to be potato water. People in Ireland are already working on it when they're not brooding over cigarettes. Potato water is going to be huge. Isn't that vodka? No. In no way. It is the unfermented water from a potato. All moisture should come from nature and be available in easy open containers. <laughs> Coconuts are too hard to open. Nature tells you when it's wet and engorged and ready for you to drink. You press a potato, you get a beautiful fresh juice, which is just like orange juice, only better. I've also been trying cactus water, but I impaled myself. Oh, I get you. I hear you. Let's bring it together, my brother. Right? We had crosswords, but now, let's make two become one. The duality is back. You understand? We are one now, my brother. I'm upset. You upset. My belly bubbling, and I gotta take a crap. You gotta take a crap. My nose running with snot, your nose running with snot. You feel me? Like when you have multiple universes in a comic book. We are all part of one universe now. Thank you, Dr. Ray. Nature has all kinds of water. Sometimes you're thirsty in the desert, you can grab one of those land mammals and squeeze water clean out of it. And sometimes I get so into hydration that I let animals pee in my mouth. That's Ew. I do. Oh, I that's do. really gross. Yep. I just love me some organic water. Now, on previous shows, we've talked about factory farming and how those chemicals have ruined everyone's health. You gotta only go organic. Shit is expensive as hell, but the females love it. I hold a head of organic broccoli out the window and chum for them hippie girls. Don't I, Cheryl? You sure do. Let them hear it. Let them hear it. It's terrifying. It's also terrifying that it works. Terrifying is right, girl. You know how many intimate unions I've had in the grain of truth's parking lot? I'll be ripping off yoga pants with my teeth. Who we got next, Cheryl? Line 7 wants to talk about honey. Dr. Ray D'Angelo, I want all your listeners to know, stop eating honey. My family, we don't even use 
honey products, or conflict honey, as we call it, because honey is made under oppressive circumstances. Bees are kept in servitude and sexual bondage. They're like flying veal. And what's worse, male honeybee genitals explode after sex. Exploding genitals? Damn! I learned how to do that from an ancient Tibetan dude in the mountains when I was over there for a three-month spiritual journey. Well, there was no fast food, so it was pretty damn emotional. I told this ancient dude in the hills, I said, I recycle. I give to public radio and eat organic. But there's an empty part of me that wants a high fructose corn syrup soda, a big-ass factory farm steak, and to slap hippie girls on the ass and treat them like crap instead of putting up with their neurotic drama and dreadful taste in music. Hippie drama is the worst drama there can be. And this dude, he was spiritual as hell. You know what he said to me? You know what he said, Cheryl? What did he say? He said, you have to buy the right books. Listen to the right music. Listen to the girls, hippie drama, and dig down deep inside yourself and mm, like a mofo. And I did. I did, Cheryl. I, um, until my mama threw me out the damn house. And here I am. That was my time in Tibet. At least I think it was Tibet. Are you sure it was Tibet? Oh, I don't know. Some darn place with hills and sheep and everyone singing in choirs and all inbred. And they played a lot of rugby. Things like that. Tibetan stuff, you know. It was real cool. Played some Tibetan rugby. Ate some cheese on toast. Real Tibetan style, too. With legs all crossed. For real. Anyway, let's wind down the show with the final yoga pose of an intense session, Savasana. It's actually Shavasana. Shavasana. Don't correct me, I'm a yogi woman. Yes. Shavasana. 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 I know Shavasana. Or corpse pose. Sure, join me. Come here on a big ray yoga mat, girl. Lay down like a corpse, like you did as a doornail. Lay there like you just got shot. Or died on a finger food voyage gone astray. I love me fresh corpse. It's so relaxing. You relax with me out there. You relax, Cheryl? You look stiff. Corpse aren't stiff, you understand? Okay, I don't really know what all of this means. Shh. Stare at the ceiling and shut up. All Think right. iffy thoughts. Clear your brain. Yeah. Like, go in your head right now. Mm-hmm. Let close your eyes. Go in your head. Get a whisk broom. You know what a whisk broom is? You ever been to, you ever seen uh, a barber on TV and after he cuts your hair, he whisk broom you off? Mm-hmm. Your hair off your body? Yeah. Take a whisk broom and whisk your brain out your head and clear your thoughts. Okay. Like, get, do it now. Do it now. Clear your brain all them damn thoughts. Yeah. Do you feel empty now? Yeah. Is your brain empty? Yeah. Now let's go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, I am so empty right now. Like I got a colonic in my brain stream. I got crap the crap out of my brain. Mm. Hit the outro music. This has been another episode of Chakra Attack with Dr. Ray D'Angelo Harris. Mm. Shit, ouch! Put your hands to yourself. Don't ever do me that way, woman. You want your kids to be safe, so you give them a mobile phone. What are they going to do when they get attacked? Throw it at someone? Why not force the state to keep us all protected by arming everybody? The senile old lady in her home, the three-year-old on the playground, the priest in his church. We think everybody should carry weapons at all times. That way, nobody gets hurt. It's a proven fact. Where there's more guns, there are less shootings. Vote yes on Proposition 45. Mandatory concealed carry for everybody. The nuclear deterrent won the Cold War. Let's use the same logic and win the war on crime. Proposition 45. Teach your kids to protect themselves. WCTR.